Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If it's your first time here, then it is good to see you and I hope you're gonna stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our midweek video. Wednesday today, very, very close to Christmas. So let me start by saying happy Christmas. I hope you have a great Christmas. I hope you get lots of great stuff from Airsoft Santa Claus. <laughs> if you are getting a load of new gear or new replicas, I hope they meet your expectations, guys. And that's why today's video is a very short one. Um, it's just really a quick video to say, I've had a good year. I hope you guys have had a good year. We're rapidly approaching the new year. It's been a good year for Airsoft. Myself, personally, had a few injuries, as many of you follow the channel will already know. But I've managed to get out to games. We've had some gameplay. And I really, really hope you guys have enjoyed the channel this year enjoyed what's been coming out so that's today's video really i wanted to give you a quick update from the video we did last weekend about custom building a replica from scratch an aeg replica from scratch and the problems you can encounter um the enc receiver set that i showed you in that video i've now installed that and completed the custom build that i was making and i'm going to show you that and have a quick chat about some of the problems i encountered so you know what you can expect <laughs> but the main reason for today's video before we get into that was just to say as always guys thank you very much for following along with the channel i really appreciate the support you guys give me for the channel and i'm glad that i've managed to have a chat with a few of you in the comments and I'm also glad that I've met a few of you out on the field at my home site, Tazball Airsoft. This coming new year, I hope that I can meet a lot more of you out on the field. Hopefully this year, I won't have the injury problems I've had. I'll be able to get to some different sites. Maybe catch up with a few of you guys that play in different sites here in the UK. And also... Speak to a few more in the comments. <laughs> and obviously, if you haven't subscribed yet, then get subscribed and then you won't miss anything that comes out. I'm hopefully going to have a load of new stuff planned for next year and we'll do some different things that we'll look at. We'll get a bit more tech out. Been a bit lax on the tech of late, but we'll get some more tech videos and instructional videos out for you as well this next year. Obviously, there'll be gameplay. I'll be doing your normal gameplay games. And we'll have a look at some new gear and new replicas as well as we always do. So again, guys, thanks very much for following along this year. Thanks for sticking with the channel. As I mentioned in previous videos, I have got two Feiarchi red dot sites that Feiarchi have, have kindly said that I can give away to you guys. I'm not running it as a competition. I'm just going to pick two of my subscribers at random and I'll send you one each of one of those red dot sites. There's there's no costs involved, so you don't worry about that. I, I will post those out to you. I've got to pick two of you out. I've delayed it a little bit because if you maybe know, if you're here in the UK, you'll know we have a lot of uh, industrial action going on with the Royal Mail. Postal services are getting a little bit hammered at the moment over the Christmas period because of the strikes that are going on. And because of those strikes, I don't think I'll be able to get anything out to you before the new year anyway, guys. So what I'll do over the Christmas period, I'll put a community post up of who has been randomly picked out to receive those red dot sites. And then I will try and make contact you with you some way, uh, or you could contact me. I'll put details in the community post anyway, and then we can sort out where your address is so I can post those out for you. And I'll get those posted out. As I said, not a competition, no costs involved or anything like that. It's just, I'm going to send those out to my subscribers. I wish I could send you all one, <laughs> but, but I can't. Uh, as a thank you for keeping up with the channel. And it is really appreciated. So, with all the Merry Christmases and Happy New Year's and that out of the way, just a quick update as well on videos. This will be the last video before Christmas. As you all probably can understand and you're all probably the same, got a lot of family commitments going on over the next few days 
So there won't be a video this coming weekend with it being Christmas Eve. I would normally put one out on Saturday. If you follow the channel, you'll already know. Um, and on the Saturday is Christmas Eve. So I'll have to spend time with my family. I've got things going on. So there'll be no video this, this weekend. I'll see if I can get something out next weekend, um, which is New Year. If I can't, again, I will let you guys know and keep you informed. Okay, well, with all that out of the way, I'm sorry that was a bit lengthy. <laughs> uh, let's get into uh, what, what we were actually going to look at. Okay, well, if you saw last week's video, you'll know that I'd bought this receiver set this is a, a full metal enc receiver set which was the final part i needed to create a, a one-off built by me replica um so yeah I, the receiver set is nice and if you remember in that video i was discussing that really it's not cost effective building your own aeg from scratch just from parts unless you do have a big surplus of spurs and then obviously you could put one together. But from an upgrade point of view, you're probably better off buying a complete replica and then building it yourself. This ENC receiver set, so just for this two parts here with no gearbox, nothing in it at all, uh, you're talking at around about 90 British pounds. So, <laughs> so not cheap. Um, <laughs> and then the other part that you've probably noticed is this SR25 stock. This stock is adjustable. And it's designed for an SR25. I put the full stock on there to give me a bit more battery space. And I kind of think it looks cool. I've got a thing for full stocks at the moment. That stock was nearly 30 British pounds as well. And so with just the stock and the receiver set, you know, you're already up to about 120 British pounds, which is, as you can probably agree, quite a lot of money with no gearbox, no electrical system, no pistol grip, no motor. No front hand guard, no outer barrel, no muzzle device, nothing. <laughs> You've got all that to buy on top. You're looking at around about 40 to 50 pounds for this particular hand guard, which is New Pro Bocker. That's on a budget. And then the outer barrel, I managed to use a spur outer barrel I had, which led to problems, which I'll get to in a second. And this mock suppressor I already had as well. But again, you'd be looking at around about 20 pounds there, another 40 British pounds for the for the, the um, outer barrel, and then obviously you need an inner barrel, a hop chamber, a hop rubber, a nub, and everything else that goes with it. So to be honest guys, it gets really expensive. So what we'll do is, as we always do, we'll have a quick look around this, and then you can maybe let me know in the comments what you think of it guys. I'll always respond to a comment, as you probably know by now. Might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. So let's uh, let's have a quick nosy around this and uh, see what you think. I think it looks quite nice, but <laughs> you might disagree. <laughs> All right, guys, let's have a nosy. So, there we go, we've had a nosy round it. Um, I think it looks quite nice. And as I say, I don't know what you guys think, but it definitely looks different. Uh, I know it's another AR-15 based replica, but you guys who know me, you know I love an AR-15 replica. <laughs> Which is why I've got this one to go with all the others. <laughs> okay, well, to give you an idea of the problems you face when you're building one of these replicas, first of all, the gearbox into the receiver. This ENC um, receiver is actually advertised on a lot of retailers as being suitable for Sima gearboxes. The gearbox shell that I've used for this build is a Sima gearbox. The Sima gearbox did fit in the lower receiver without issue, guys. However, the upper receiver would not fit. I had to do some machining along the top edge of the gearbox hasn't damaged the integrity of the gearbox but again 
maybe not something you'd want to take on if you're just starting out in teching. So I had to machine box, I had to machine down the top of the gearbox shell so that this upper receiver would fit. So that was the first problem I encountered without a handguard or anything on there. So that was my first problem. The next problem was the stock. Again, this is a Sima SR25 stock. This should fit in the ENC metal receiver. However, it did not. <laughs> so that left me with two choices. I could either machine down the bottom edge of the receiver, the lower receiver here, or machine down the stock because it just wouldn't fit inside the receiver. The, the stock nub here was too thick. Now, obviously with the stock being a polymer, it's much easier to machine down that. So basically I didn't machine it down, I filed it down until it was nice and round, which took me a while to get it neat, and then that fits snugly in the lower receiver. So again, this part would not fit to the receiver as standard. Some of you guys might have noticed that the pistol grip that I'm using does not fit perfectly with the receiver to get a good adjustment on your motor height adjustment and to get a good mesh between the pinion and bevel gear. So as you can see, there's a slight gap, if you can make that out on camera, between the lower receiver, the trigger, and the pistol grip. Doesn't bother me too much, um, but not ideal, guys. Doesn't look as neat as it might do on something that you bought. The next problem I had, if we flip this over here, is I had to use the magazine release that came with the receiver. The reason for that is, is I have an extended mag release that I tend to use, which is also ambidextrous, so you can release left or right. But it's the extended part that I use, because I'm right-handed. And the extended mag release would not fit at all in this lower receiver. So that just wouldn't fit. So I had to use the standard mag release that came with the ENC receiver set. So, no biggie so far, eh, guys. I've had to machine down the uh, gearbox shell. I've had to file down the base of the stock to get the stock to fit. And I've had to go with the mag catch and mag release that came with the receiver. I can't use my own custom designed one. The next problem I encountered was in order to access the hop up, obviously you have your uh, mock charging handle. That was catching. So I had to file down a little bit on the top edge of the um, of the receiver so that, uh, that in the charging handle so that that wouldn't catch on the gearbox shell as well but that's been resolved as well so that works and then as we move forward on the replica we come to the handguard now those of you who have attempted to change handguards on any of your replicas before will know that sometimes barrel nuts can be a little bit uh, tricky um, you can have slightly off threads between the barrel nut and the receiver now, thankfully, in this case, the barrel nut and the receiver did mate up without a problem. There was no issues with the threads. However, the outer barrel, which actually came off a, a Sima CM513, it's a very short outer barrel, it's only about that long, which is what I wanted for this build, um, does not fit snugly in the upper receiver. So I had to tack weld in a slightly bit of metal. Um, to be honest with you guys, didn't use welder, used some metal epoxy to shim out the outer barrel so that it wasn't loose in its housing and so that it sat straight so the hop unit would mate up correctly with the uh, front of the gearbox casing and wouldn't have any nozzle issues with the hop chamber. Once that was on, I then had an issue that the outer barrel would not sit straight so I had to sand down the face of the upper receiver because it was slightly off when it had been machined and it was pointing off to the left. Um, so I filed that down, managed to get the outer barrel to sit nice and snug and straight so that it all mates up. And after I'd done all that, guys, it was built. <laughs> so as you can tell from my previous video, the amount of effort involved to get one of these built is quite a lot. And that's because a lot of the AEG manufacturers' tolerances are slightly out. Even within the same manufacturer, you could have one replica that has a slightly out tolerance compared to another replica. So there's never any guarantees, guys, that these things are going to fit together well. So there you go, guys. A quick update on the custom build that I've made. This, you could argue, started out life as a, as a Sima CM513. 
To be honest guys, it's now completely custom. The only bits remaining of that Simer are the outer barrel, and I think that's it. Oh, and the gearbox shell. <laughs> the outer barrel and the gearbox shell are the only original parts that were at Simer. So this now is a completely custom built replica. So if you're thinking of giving it a go guys, just remember the problems I've had there. And if you think that that's too much work, it is gonna cost you more money. The only time it's gonna be worth it is if there is a specific replica you're trying to make and you cannot buy it. But my advice would be guys, I don't think I'll try and build, build another one from scratch because the amount of issues I've had with that and the amount of custom work I've had to do. To me, it's just better to buy a replica that has the, the receivers and guard and what have you that you want, the body work if you like, that you want, and then just upgrade. So, here we go guys, quick video on what I've done with that. And to wish you a Merry Christmas, so all that leaves me to say is, is again guys, thanks very much for following the channel this year. Keep looking out for the updates on who I'm sending those sites to. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a really good Christmas, a really happy new year, and I'll see you in the next one.